Hello, welcome to this pharmacology session. Uh, we are continuing the discussion with anti-cancer drugs on this session and we discuss some preliminary points about the anti-cancer therapy on one of the previous sessions. Uh, I would advise you to go back to that session to hear those, those points and on this session we continue with the discussion of the individual anti-cancer agents and we start with alkylating agents that's the first group uh, you can have a look at the slide nitrogen mustards the cyclophosphamide chlorambucil and meclorithamine nitrosoureas that's carmustin also called bcnu lomustin called ccnu and methyl ccnu bcnu is bischloroethyl nitrosoureia and ccnu is chloroethyl cyclohexyl nitrosoureia the next one is alkyl sulfonates that's busulfan and there are many more agents which act by the similar mechanism that they are alkylating agents is cisplatin, carboplatin, dacarbazine and procarbazine. Now if you look at this particular slide, the very important, the most important agent on this slide is cyclophosphamide. We are going to make a nice table and visualize all the things about cyclophosphamide. So let's go to the next slide. It is showing cyclophosphamide. If you follow, my, follow the cursor, cyclophosphamide has got another compound e-phosphamide which is available by intravenous route of administration and in the first column itself I tell you that cyclophosphamide is toxic it produces certain toxicities like hemorrhagic cystitis and if we want to prevent this toxicity a specific agent is used so I have written protection against the hemorrhagic cystitis to cyclophosphamide is given by an agent called MESNA M-E-S-N-A that's mercaptoethane sulfonate. So MESNA is an agent which is used for prevention of hemorrhagic cystitis produced by cyclophosphamide. I said cyclophosphamide is an important anti-cancer agent because it's got broad spectrum against various cancers. It's useful against Hodgkin's lymphoma, it's use, useful against non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and it's useful against multiple myelomas and leukemia. So we mentioned four important points Hodgkin's, non-Hodgkin's, multiple myeloma and leukemias. In addition to this it's useful in the breast cancers, it's useful in the neuroblastoma. Other uses of cyclophosphamide are equally important. It can be used in the management of rheumatoid arthritis and lupus erythematosus as a cytotoxic agent and also in case of nephrotic syndrome and rheumatic vasculitis. We go to the last column to see the adverse effects. Cyclophosphamide produces hemorrhagic cystitis, very characteristic of cyclophosphamide. And there is also fibrosis, hemorrhagic cystitis and fibrosis. What's the reason? Cyclophosphamide has got some amount of acrolein content. It contains acrolein and this acrolein is toxic and it produces hemorrhagic cystitis. To prevent this toxicity, we need to give an agent called MESNA, we already mentioned, that's mercaptoethane sulfonate. Apart from this, the other adverse effects of cyclophosphamide include, just like most of the anti-cancer drugs, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, that's gastrointestinal intolerance, then bone marrow suppression, and of course, alopecia. We have already discussed the general toxicity of uh, the anti-cancer drugs on a different module, on a different session, and it will be worthwhile if you refer to that particular station. There we said the rapidly multiplying cells, normal cells of the human body are also affected by the anti-cancer drugs because they are rapidly growing cells and these include the cells of the bone marrow and that's why you get bone marrow suppression. Next one is the hair follicle cells, that's why you get alopecia and there is mucositis because mucous membranes are also rapidly multiplying cells. So nausea, vomiting, mucositis, glossitis, stomatitis, diarrhea. All these become common adverse effects for anti-cancer drugs. So, this is why I am saying bone marrow suppression, alopecia, nausea and vomiting. So, that's your cyclophosphamide. We go to the next slide to discuss the rest of the alkylating agents. The first row writes about CCNU and BCNU and I am highlighting these drugs because they are lipophilic and their penetration in the CNS is extremely fine and we make use of this fact is CCNU and BCNU are preferred for brain tumors. So if you think of brain tumors that CCNU 
and BCNU. Amongst the adverse effects, once again, bone marrow suppression, renal toxicity, and there is pulmonary fibrosis. So these are common adverse effects of CCNU and BCNU. The next alkylating agent is busulfan, and this busulfan is commonly used for CML, that's chronic myelogenous leukemia. And the adverse effects are again pulmonary fibrosis and skin pigmentation. The next drug from the examples of alkylating agents are chlorambucil and melphalan. They are useful for CLL and multiple myeloma. So CML busulfan and CLL chlorambucil and melphalan. On the next row, we discuss cisplatin and carboplatin. That's the last row, cisplatin and carboplatin. Let me tell you, cisplatin and carboplatin both produce nephrotoxicity, both produce neurotoxicity and bone marrow suppression. So cisplatin, whatever nephrotoxicity, neurotoxicity cisplatin produces can be prevented. So you can get protection against nephrotoxicity and neurotoxicity by the use of an agent called amiphostin. So in the first, first column itself, we have said amiphostin gives protection against the nephrotoxicity and neurotoxicity produced by cisplatin. What are the tumors for which cisplatin and carboplatin are commonly used? They are the tumors of testes and ovaries. That's, that's very common area for cisplatin and carboplatin. Also the carcinoma bladder and the carcinoma of the lung. You can think of using cisplatin and carboplatin. We want to differentiate between cisplatin and carboplatin as far as the toxicity is concerned. And for differentiating, I am just trying to make use of this alphabet B which is present in the spelling of carboplatin. I am just, you know, trying to design a way for you to make you remember the things. Carboplatin is containing the alphabet B. So you remember that this B for bone marrow suppression and say that carboplatin has got more bone marrow suppression. So that's written here. And once you say that carboplatin is more bone marrow toxic, obviously the, the conclusion drawn or the inference drawn is cisplatin is less bone marrow toxic. So between cisplatin and carboplatin, carboplatin, that's B, is more bone marrow toxic and cisplatin produces less bone marrow suppression. Cisplatin, a drug which produces less bone marrow suppression, is more liable to cause other toxicities and these other toxicities include as I said nephrotoxicity and neurotoxicity. The neurotoxicity includes peripheral neuropathy, foot drop and the damage of the eighth nerve, vestibular cochlear nerve leading to high frequency hearing loss as well as tinnitus. So cisplatin is less bone marrow toxic and more nephrotoxic and neurotoxic in addition, cisplatin is a potent agent which produces severe vomiting. This has to be remembered. From the anti-cancer drugs, whatever drugs produce vomiting, cisplatin is the most important candidate. We go now down to carboplatin. We said carbo, that's B. So bone marrow suppression. And if it's producing more bone marrow suppression, means all the other toxicities are comparatively less than cisplatin. That's there's less nephrotoxicity less neurotoxicity and less eight nerve damage or vestibular cochlear nerve damage. I hope this is going to be useful. Cisplatin produces nephrotoxicity, neurotoxicity can be prevented by the use of amiphostin. Carboplastin contains B that's more bone marrow toxic. So nephrotoxicity, neurotoxicity is comparatively less. Cisplatin, the spelling doesn't have B. So bone marrow suppression is less but it produces other toxicities that's nephro, neuro and vomiting. So on this slide we saw CCNU, BCNU for brain tumors, busulfan, CML, chlorambucil and melphalan, CLL, cisplatin, carboplatin for testes, ovaries, bladder and lung. So that was the summary of this slide. Let's go further to know what is BCNU and CCNU. Have a look at the slide is telling you the full name of BCNU that's 1,3-bis, 2-chloroethyl, 1-nitrosoeuria and it's also called carmostin and because it's bis chloroethyl nitrosoeuria so BCNU. The second compound is 1,2-chloroethyl, 3-cyclohexyl, 
nitrosiurea, that's CCNU or lomustin. Now since it is chloroethyl cyclohexyl, so you are getting two C's, chloroethyl cyclohexyl nitrosiurea, so it's CCNU. Now we discuss procarbazin and dacarbazin. Procarbazin and dacarbazin are typical agents and they are used in Hodgkin. Procarbazin is used in the MOPP regimen for Hodgkin. We are going to go further and explore what are the various regimens, anti-cancer regimens. But before this, let's start remembering the word MOPP. So, procarbazin is used in MOPP regimen and dacarbazin is the D in ABVD regimen. So, these are two regimens for Hodg Hodgkin and dacarbazin in ABVD regimen and procarbazin in MOPP regimen. Let's explore more on procarbazin. What's the mechanism of action? Procarbazin leads to formation of hydrogen peroxide H2O2 and generates free radicals that cause cutting of the DNA strands. So, production of hydrogen peroxide, generation of free radicals and cutting of DNA strand. That's procarbazin. And that's a common action also for dacarbazin. Amongst the adverse effects, Procarbazin and dacarbazin are likely to produce certain adverse effects which are common to most of the anti-cancer drugs. Number one, myelosuppression that is bone marrow toxicity. Then it does produce pulmonary toxicity in the form of pulmonary fibrosis and there can be bleeding that's hemolysis. It can produce GI intolerance, central nervous system disturbances as well as neuropathy and skin reactions. Importantly, procarbazin has got disulfiram like effect that's alcohol intolerance so the patient should not consume alcohol while receiving procarbazin obviously procarbazin produces certain fermentation products and these fermentation products can have mao inhibitory action that's monoamine oxidase inhibitory action so this is going to lead to accumulation of amines and as you know this can lead to conditions like cheese reaction so that's about procarbazin Dacarbazin produces mainly alopecia, skin rashes, GI disturbances and along with skin rashes there could be phototoxicity and flu-like symptoms. So important things, points on this slide, procarbazin, dacarbazin produce hydrogen peroxide, generate free radicals and produce cutting of DNA strands. Their toxicities include bone marrow suppression, pulmonary toxicity and alopecia are the important ones and MOPP regimen of Hodgkin that is use of procarbazin and ABVD regimen for Hodgkin we use dacarbazin. Dacarbazin is also useful for metastatic malignant melanoma for refractory Hodgkin as well as for sarcoma. So that's the summary for procarbazin and dacarbazin. Yes, just now we said MOPP and ABVD I think that's the right place to explore this, what are the various regimens? This slide is showing you the various regimens. Follow the slide, follow the alphabet, and try to remember what's the regimen. M O P P. M stands for mechlorethamine. O in these all these regimens usually stands for oncovin. What is this oncovin? Onco means tumor, and there is vin. So this vin is for vinca alkaloids. So, when there is a vinca alkaloid used, it's called oncovin. So, M mechlorethamine, O oncovin, P procarbazin, and the last P is prednisone. I am advising you if there is P in the therapeutic regimen, anti cancer regimen, especially the last P usually stands for prednisone. If there is one more P, this P could stand for procarbazin. So, this is most likely. Let's go to the next regimen that's ABVD regimen. A stands for adriamycin or doxorubicin. B stands for bleomycin. V stands for vinblastin. And D stands for dacarbazin. So that's ABVD regimen for Hodgkin. Instead of MOPP in the first row, in the third row we have COPP. And this C stands for cyclophosphamide. Otherwise, the rest of the drugs are same as MOPP because only one alphabet is replaced. It was MOPP, this is COPP. 
In MOPP, M is meclorithamine and in COPP, the C is cyclophosphamide. Otherwise, the rest of the three drugs, O is oncovin, pro, P is procarbazine and P is prednisone. Next, we discuss PVB and here this P means platinol and this word platinol is used for cisplatin. Then V is vinblastin and B is again bleomycin. Next one is PEB, that's platinol, E is etoposide and B is again bleomycin. The last regimen mentioned here is interesting and its name is CHOP, C-H-O-P, CHOP. What is CHOP? C is cyclophosphamide, H is derived from a very typical name, another name or showing the structure of the drug doxorubicin that is H, hydroxydonorubicin. This H stands for hydroxydonorubicin, that's nothing but doxorubicin. So cyclophosphamide, hydroxydonorubicin means doxorubicin, O for oncovin and P for prednisone. So I know there are too many anti-cancer regimens, but out of this I just choose say six or seven important regimens so that you can remember some important anti-cancer therapies. Next we move on to a new group of drugs and that's anti-metabolites. Anti-metabolites act on S phase. S is DNA synthesis. And we have folate antagonist methotrexate, purine antagonist 6MP and 6TG, that's thioguanine, and pyrimidine antagonist 5-FU, that's 5-fluorouracil and cytorabine. The antimetabolites are specific for S phase. And on this slide, we are going to discuss methotrexate and 6-MP in the first place. These are very important drugs. As you know, methotrexate is a folate antagonist and it inhibits DHF reductase. This is how it is going to affect the DNA synthesis. Methotrexate is used for choriocarcinoma, for leukemias and lymphomas, for osteosarcoma and a wide variety of tumors including breast, head and neck. Not only this, methotrexate, I remind you, is an important disease modifying anti-rheumatic drug. Have a look at the slide please, it is showing you some conditions in which it is used. That's the conditions, the other uses other than the malignancies. So it includes rheumatoid arthritis, includes systemic lupus erythematosus, psoriasis, lepra reactions and Crohn disease. So in all these conditions, it has, an, it has a useful disease modifying effect, it has an anti-inflammatory effect and anti-immune effect. Let's come to the adverse effects of methotrexate. It produces nausea, vomiting, bone marrow suppression, alopecia. It's a very potent anti-cancer agent. So when it will suppress the rapidly multiplying cells, obviously you get these common adverse effects. Nausea, vomiting, bone marrow suppression and alopecia. It liberates a 7-hydroxymetabolite. This produces crystal urea. So that's typical of methotrexate. Let me remind you, cyclophosphamide produces hemorrhagic cystitis and methotrexate produces crystal urea. Okay, let's go ahead. It leads to mucositis. Next, it is an abortifacient agent. It means it's a uterine stimulant. I hope you know methotrexate is used for this purpose as a uterine stimulant. Next, because it is folate antagonist, is going to produce megaloblastic anemia and it's also going to lead to liver toxicity and it can produce folinic crisis due to depletion of the folic acid and we need to save the patient of this toxicity and we give folinic acid to the patient that is also called leucovorin or citrovorum factor and this situation of preventing methotrexate toxicity is called folinic rescue or leucovorin rescue. So that's about methotrexate, folic acid antagonist. The next drug is 6 mercaptopurin or 6MP and obviously it's a purine antagonist. This drug is inactive. When it goes inside the body, it is acted upon by a typical enzyme. You need to remember the name of the enzyme for your objective question purposes. 
Name of the enzyme is hypoxanthin guanine phosphoribosyl transferase and it can be abbreviated as HGPRT or HGPR transferase. So that's the enzyme which activates 6MP and then there is formation of 6MP ribose phosphate. So a ribose phosphate is formed and this substance is active. Uses of mercaptopurin are typical. It's used in ALL and CML and it's also useful in Crohn disease. Now mercaptopurin produces bone marrow toxicity, liver toxicity and GI toxicity. The last box on this slide on the right hand side is talking of an important drug interaction. As you know, the patients with cancer can suffer from hyperuricemia and they can have gouty attacks. Hyperuricemia is a common adverse effect of many anti-cancer agents. When you get this hyperuricemia, you think of decreasing the uric acid synthesis or you think of excreting uric acid. If you think of decreasing the uric acid synthesis, you always think of a substance which decreases uric acid synthesis that's called allopurinol. Allopurinol inhibits the enzyme xanthine oxidase, inhibits the steps hypoxanthine to xanthine, xanthine to uric acid. This is how uric acid synthesis will be controlled. So we have a situation, patient is on anti-cancer therapy, patient gets gouty arthritis and you think of using allopurinol, so you put the patient on allopurinol. That's right, this is going to help the patient. Allopurinol is going to inhibit xanthine oxidase and uric acid synthesis will come down. That's correct. But just imagine a situation along with this allopurinol, when you are giving allopurinol to your patient, the patient is receiving 6 MP, that's 6 mercaptopurin. What's going to happen? Please mind well, 6 MP is metabolized by xanthine oxidase. 6-MP is metabolized or broken down by the enzyme xanthine oxidase. So unless this 6-MP uh, gets broken down, it's not going to get out of the body. And what you are doing is, you are giving allopurinol, which is xanthine oxidase inhibitor. So you are going to stop the breakdown of 6-MP. 6-MP is going to accumulate inside the body and the toxicity of 6-MP is going to be precipitated. A lesson to learn if your patient is on anti-cancer therapy and especially if the patient is receiving 6 MP and gets hyperuricemia, please don't use allopurinol. Don't think of decreasing the uric acid synthesis. You can use other agents which are available for hyperuricemia. So drug interaction between 6 MP and allopurinol is an important drug interaction. Always remember about this. So these are the anti-metabolites acting on S phase methotrexate and 6-MP on this session. You can go to the further session and visualize the other anti-metabolite drugs and the further anti-cancer drugs. Okay? Thank you.